Let's start with uh, Jim Jordan's quest to be speaker. He says it's going to be a vote tomorrow at noon. How close is he to getting to 217? I think he's down to around about eight votes. I know earlier today, uh, Teddy Davis and a few others came on board. So um, I'm pretty sure he's he's just closing in on those eight. And he's and tomorrow and the votes tomorrow at noon. So he'll be he'll be working very hard to get there. You're supporting Jim Jordan as well, right, Congressman? Correct. So with that said, are we going to witness an historic escapade tomorrow like we did last January with Kevin McCarthy? Or does the conference, albeit not formally, I realize you didn't change the rule, want to have a real number and a good sense of what's going to happen before you bring this to the floor? I think it's going to be really close. I, I Honestly, I think it would be... Um, Folks are underestimating what the grassroots is all about in this country. Um, this is the type of person they're energized around. I think he's, if not the most popular, he is one of the most popular Republicans in all of the United States, especially with the grassroots. So I suspect a lot of these folks are just holdouts because Jim hasn't been able to talk to him. You know, he started out with 50 something, I think 56 or 57 last week. And um, and just get to them about their concerns. Some of them are old old wounds you might not heal. But if he picks up um, five, I believe he uh, if he picks up five more out of the, out of those eight, I believe he's in the he's in the winner circle. Congressman, as you know, the government will face a potential shutdown come November seventeenth. Would you support a speaker, Jim Jordan, putting a continuing resolution on the floor until April? I have not traditionally supported uh, continued resolutions, but a lot of the times I don't support them for, because of what's in them. Um, I would like, Jim's a fiscal conservative and a hawk. I'd like to see a proposal he put forward, but I, I could I could lean towards supporting something if I thought it was it would put us in better fiscal shape. Because currently right now, as you know, we take in five trillion a year and spend over seven trillion. And those numbers don't work. I don't care who you are. I would like to see us put forth a budget and the, and the 12 appropriations bills as the law requires. Congressman, if we're down to eight now, what's happened since Friday? We had your colleague Bill Hyzenga on with us right around this time, and it was believed to be around 50 votes that Jim Jordan needed to make up. What kind of deal-making has been happening? What kind of promises are being made to pull people over? Do you know? I don't think there's been any real deal-making. I think it's just reaching out to folks a lot of times Politicians are just like anybody else. I like to know the person in charge is concerned about about what's going on with them and what's going on in their district. And I think Jim um, will will do just that. I think he's he's very good at at one on one. He's good to the group too. But um, one on one is where he excels. I think he's talking to them about what's important to them and making sure that their priority their priorities are the same priorities: a strong defense, a strong border. Um, Funding for Israel, as you as you he he said so eloquently in his in the in the preamble here to this this show. So I, I would think those are the things that people were concerned about, and I think he's expressing them to him. That's why he's he's closing the number. He's got forty, I think forty two, or over, I'm sorry, over forty five of those uh, have have converted since since um, earlier this week. Well, just today he won over several of the party's top defense hawks. Um, has he spoken to you directly about Ukraine aid and how he would approach that? We know the White House is going to be asking for more of that alongside and potentially linked to aid to Israel. Yeah, the State Department is wanting to tie those two together. I, I just don't see a need for tying them together. I don't think that's a, a wise move at all. Um, if, you know, we're here. Put, the, put two bills up. Let people vote them up or down. I, I would dare say there'll be very few vote against Israel. And the Ukrainian thing would probably pass regardless, so because you you pick up most of the Democrats and a few Republicans. So I don't see why putting everybody on the spot for something like that, because that's something that I would have to question myself whether we do that or not. I think that's not the way that's not the way to govern. I think you ought to let everything stand on its own, especially spending bills. And I think that was that that was part of the problem we had with the with the prior speaker. Mm -hmm. Congressman, we heard a lot about Jim Jordan, uh, certainly over the weekend, while it became clear that he was the nominee and was going to uh, lean into this this week. It was a big topic on Sunday morning television. Uh, a couple of uh, moments from his past, accusations that he helped to cover up uh, sexual harassment or sexual assault as a wrestling coach. Uh, and then 
the regard uh, with regard to January 6, what we've been hearing from Liz Cheney, she tweeted uh, that Jim Jordan urged that Mike Pence refuse to count lawful electoral votes. If he's nominated to be speaker, Republicans will be abandoning the Constitution. What's your reaction to these? Well, Liz is um, she got beat in a primary and she got beat pretty bad, actually. So she's she's got an axe to grind with a lot of people. And, and Jim's just one of them. And as far as the the wrestling thing goes. I mean, that's that's been over and over and over. They bring that up all the time and and um, and it just doesn't go anywhere. So I'd assume that that's just they'll keep bringing that up to the day Jim dies. And as far as um, well, January, what if what if we took Liz Cheney's name off of that statement, though, she, the, his involvement in the conspiracy surrounding January 6th? Is that something that concerns you? No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I was there on January 6th. I was with Jim. I was on the floor. I, in fact, I was the last person to leave the House floor. And when I called with my concerns to the committee and to the investigators, uh, I did not receive a call back. I waited a week. And then again, mm -hmm. it did not happen. And then I asked to see the footage. I was denied that, but I was allowed um, to somebody who could show me some of the footage to show what was something that was going on and I wanted them to know about it and yet they still weren't concerned. So I think the American public's moved on from January 6th and, and nobody, I never get asked about it when I'm out in public or, or up here even. So Liz is going to keep being Liz and that's what, that's what keeps her name in, in the spotlight. But, but I'm afraid that ship sailed a long time ago.